From Day to DeRocher to Magley, it's Double Play with DeRocher and Day. With their guest Sal Magley, here's another chapter of Double Play with DeRocher and Day. Welcome to another visit with baseball's most exciting and controversial couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher, with their guest for today, Sal Magley. From a recent poll of baseball's most outstanding hitters, it was established that the home run was the most difficult task to perform. Now, Leo, what's your opinion? Not so hard to do. In 1938, in the All-Star game, I, I hit a home run. Thank you, Leo. And, uh, Lorraine, do you have anything to add to this? It may read that way in the record books, Mr. DeRocher, but the home run didn't go any further out than the pitcher's mound. In fact, it was a bunt. Jimmy Fox picked it up and threw it to first, but Charlie Geringer forgot to cover, and then Joe DiMaggio picked it up and threw it in the National League dugout. And while Hercules here was rounding the bases for this wonderful home run, Casey Stengel was dunking the ball in water. Well, why did he do that, Lorraine? Well, he said it was too hot to handle. <clears throat> Pardon us, Leo. But while you and Lorraine discuss this matter in private, here's an important message. And now back to Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day and their guest for today, Sal the Barber Magley. Hi there. I'm sure you know by now, fans, that our guest is the barber, Sal Magley, and that we're getting ready for a few close shaves on this show. And right off the bat, Sal, I have a letter here. It's just signed... A giant fan number one, Indianapolis, who says, I think it was very unfair to ban the players for jumping to the Mexican League. Well, I think we should ask you, since you were one of those players who, who was banned for jumping, do you think it was unfair? I went in it with my eyes open. And uh, most nasty for financial reasons. So when they banned me for five years, I, uh, I deserved it. But the way things broke out right at the present time, I'm glad that it happened because... I acquired quite a bit of experience in Mexico in my pitching run. That you feel you wouldn't have acquired here if you had stayed? If you start two or three times and you don't do so well, why, you never know when you get another start. <laughs> yes, uh, get that razor of yours well sharpened up because I want as many starts as you've had in the past and let's win some ball games. Well, we'll try. You mean there were so few pitchers there that no matter how badly you did, you still got uh, your regular chance to start? That's right, Lorraine. Uh... I got my regular start there, and therefore I had to learn. Because most naturally, I don't like to get my ears pinned back. We had a great manager. He was a New York Giant coach, Adolph Lukey, one of the greatest curveball pitchers in the majors. I decided to learn how to pitch, and uh, he taught me just what the curveball was supposed to be for, not throw it in the middle of the plate to hit that outside corner. And therefore... I achieved that, and I can thank the Lord that, that I did learn it and went to Mexico. Sal, do you think it would be easy for a pitcher to win 30 games if he didn't always have to pitch against the top clubs? No, it wouldn't, Lorraine, because you have to start every fourth day and relieve, and it's the only possible way you can win 30 games. And you have to pitch against all the ball clubs. Like myself, I have a lot of trouble with those bottom place ball clubs because I think I don't bear down as much as I would if I pitch against Brooklyn. You're telling me I have to go out there and stick a fork in you some of the time. You get lazy, especially when they give you a good lead. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little needling now and then. Well, Dizzy Dean won 30. How did well, you Well, uh, in the year that Dizzy Dean won 30, I was on the club with him, and uh, Dizzy not only started every fourth ball game, but he relieved... I know that he went in many a ball game when the score was tied after the other uh, pitcher or pitchers had pitched 10 or 11 innings and Diz went in and we would win it in the next two and he'd get credit for the win. And uh, I say that in order to win 30 or more, you really got to pitch every fourth day. You've got to beat the top and the bottom clubs all the way down the line and you've got to have an awful lot of luck. How many games did you start in 1951, Sal? Well, I started 38 ball games. And how many times did you relieve? I relieved uh, exactly five ball games in 1951. Well, so it would have been pretty tough. Yes, you can see that. It sure would. Well, speaking of winners, we uh, would like to have our sponsor tell you a few words right now about a winner. And now back to double play with DeRocher and Day. I think it might be very interesting to discuss uh, nicknames. Your own, for instance, Sal. Well, How did you get the name of the barber? 
It happened in St. Louis uh, with my, I believe it was the second start you gave me, Leo. And uh, You talked me into that, too. You had to well, go out and pitch so well the first time I used you again. Well, the reason why, uh, you didn't have anybody else. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> he was desperate I'm sick of my death. I didn't have anyone else. Well, I am, too. I'm not a barber in trade. But, uh, and it has nothing to do with your being uh, Italian. No, no, it hasn't. Uh, it happened in St. Louis. I pitched this peculiar game. I uh, left 13 men on bases, allowed 11 hits. I walked seven, one of my wild days. <laughs> and I beat them three to nothing. So the next day I pick up the paper and I read Sal Magley the Barber. So right away I see who wrote it. It was Jim McCulley from the news. And uh, I got a hold of him. I said, Jim, what's the idea of calling me the barber? He said, well, Sal, in yesterday's game, you sure gave us a close shave. So well, that was it. <laughs> what I want to know is how were you feeling during this uh, wild game that Sal was pitching? You must have been up and down that dugout well, drinking water, you, chewing in gum. In St. Louis, it's a rough dugout, and you have to go underneath to get to the water. But I uh, give you my word, I made many a trip from that corner back underneath and back out before he got through, as he says... Walking seven and eleven hits and thirteen men left on base. Any <laughs> given time, we could have been beaten with a base hit. You mean yeah. you could have pulled him out of that game at any given moment? Yes, but he had won the start previous to this one, and I just figured I'm going to let him go. And then he told you the truth when he said I didn't have anyone else. Well, you know, Sal isn't the only cool, calm, collected member of his family. You know, when he's out on the mound, he looks so cold, like he has ice water in his veins. But his wife, Kay. Never gets worried in the stand. She just sits there, no matter what kind of trouble you're in, and I look over to where she's sitting. She's just as calm. That's where I mean, Leo she should be. Such confidence. How can I be that way with well, you guys out there, ball one, ball two? Uh, you don't have to worry. Uh, I don't. Oh, I know. Yeah, we win. We win a ball game one and nothing, fans. Uh, two to one. Ten, eleven innings, and when the players all file in the clubhouse, they all look at me like I got four heads, and they say, "We had them all the way." Right. Going back to n nicknames, although I know you don't Don't like ask yours. me how I got mine. Yes, I, I want to know who gave it to you. I Someone don't. must have given it to I, you. Yes, but I, it's been so long ago that I can't remember. But it must be <laughs> because I barbered with the umpires and or with somebody. Or I was a fresh busher. They told me I was fresher than paint when I first come up, and I guess they were right. And So one day I had come out in the paper, Lippy DeRocher, and it's stuck with me ever since. Do you like your nickname? Yes, I do. Uh, well, Leo doesn't like his. He doesn't. But uh, nicknames are, are very interesting. I think it's wonderful. Bobby Thompson's is so colorful to be called the Royal Scott Express. And uh, what are some of the other nicknames? Oh, there's so many of them, like Dizzy Dean and Daffy Dean and all those kind of names. And the but Wild Horse of the old Daffy. days. Now, how would he uh, pick well, up the name uh, of Daffy? Because he was a very quiet fellow. Dizzy just said, I'm the big man in this family. I'm Dizzy and you're Daffy. Well, I love the, the name that Sheldon has. Sheldon Jones is Available Jones, and I asked him about it, and he said... Well, he said, when I first came up, uh, the manager had used just about every picture there was. And, and uh, he looked down the bench and he said, well, who's available? And he said, I stood up. And he said, I am. Where did some other nicknames come from? Well, Why did they call Babe, Babe Ruth, for instance? Why didn't they call him George Ruth? Well, it's just one of those things, honey. I, you're asking a lot of questions here. But how do we know what happened to nicknames? We've got All right, Luke trouble Gary, trying to win no, I want to find this out because women, I think, are very interested in nicknames. Uh, I think they're interested in the personalities that nicknames imply. Well, I got some news for you, Sally. I'm folding my arms and looking at her. If she's going to get the answer to any nickname, she's going to have to come up with them herself because I don't know what she's talking about. You don't? I don't know what uh, they're about. Didn't they call it. Gary the Iron Horse? Yes, they called him the Iron Horse because he played in so many consecutive ball games over a span of years. Well, that's very what I simple. want to know. We'll now, ask the question and we'll try and answer it. <laughs> All right, well, now let me think of somebody. Now, there you are. All right, There's the Wild Horse of the Osage. The Wild Horse of the Osage, Pepper Martin, because when he run, the dirt flew behind him and he dove head first, and he played the game rough and tough from the time it started until it was over. It had nothing to do with his playing football. Nothing whatsoever to do with his playing football. And Frankie Frisch, of course, was called the Fordham Flash because he came from Fordham. And, and that was because athlete. he was a great football player. Now, he, he did have something to do with that. He was the Fordham Flash. He was a great football player, well, Frisch was. he carried the name over. That's right. And Alvin Blackie Dark. Blackie has... What, where did he get that name? Because right. he has black hair? No. I think uh, because his last name is Dark, so they have to have something to do I don't know. In fact, I never heard of Alvin the first Dark. The time I ever started reading about Alvin Dark, they always said Alvin Blackie Dark. All the women find all the things to read about the players that have got nicknames. 
very few women are ever interested in batting averages and the technical side of baseball. And so the things they're interested in are the personalities of the players. How good looking they are. Oh, sure. And I think both of you are very handsome. Now, does that make oh, you feel good? Go ahead. Any more questions? Yes. We'll answer anything for you now. <laughs> now I'm in. Uh, sure, now well, I want to know about which park do you prefer to pitch in? He better prefer to pitch in all of them. I know that. <laughs> well, he must have some preference. Well, I like to pitch in them big ballparks, about uh, 500 feet in left field and 500 in right. <laughs> ah, that's... You have a uh, fellow like Thompson and Willie sure, Mays out there. Sure. And get everything. He wants three gazelles in the outfield. And he four wants guys absolutely in impossible to hit a home run. Right. I think that all parks should be exactly the, the same to uh, test the true value of a pitcher and a hitter. But I don't think that he, he has any trouble in any ballpark. A fellow that wins 23... And loses eight. Is that what you lost? No, Leo. If we, I lost six. Where six. were you, weren't you? Well, I wasn't around. I, I, I wasn't watching them, honey. I was. Uh, I had my head down all day long when they were going on that drive. <laughs> but a fellow that wins 23 and loses six, he doesn't have too much to worry about in what ballpark he could How very true. Well, Sal, it's been wonderful having you with us on our little show, Double Play, and I'm sure the fans enjoyed it. And we enjoyed having the fans with us, too. And please write and, and uh, tell us about the things you'd like to hear discussed or questions you would like us to ask any special guests, and if we have them on our show, if they can be with us, we'll ask them. Okay? See you next week, same time, same station. You've been listening to another chapter of Double Play with baseball's most exciting couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher. Today, Lorraine and Leo had as their guest Sal Magley. Join us when, again, it's time for... Double play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day, plus another big-time guest star. Double play is produced by Marty Martin, directed by Ted Nealon, and is a Martez production.